Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to this week's edition of Boom Chat. Today we'll be talking to Ryan Parrott and Francesco Mortarino, the amazing team that's bringing you the new comic book series, Power Rangers. With the end of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic book series, we saw the Omega Rangers defeated by a new threat, the Imperial. In Power Rangers number one, we learned that they need the help of someone unexpected and it's the last person you imagine. All right, Ryan. So with this new threat, the Omega Rangers are forced to work with Draken. Does he have any room for redemption or will the team need to be on full alert for an inevitable backstab? <laughs> um, look, I will say this. If in Game of Thrones, spoiler alert to anyone who out there who still hasn't seen Game of Thrones, if Jamie Lannister can toss a kid out of a window in the pilot and by the end he's the most popular character, any character can be redeemed. Absolutely every single one of them. Um, but okay, that being said, fair. yeah. So that being said, though, I, I think you know, I think the most interesting characters are bad guys. I like bad guys; they're my favorite. So I didn't bring Draken back in the story just to turn over a new leaf. You know, I want to dig into who he is and a bit more and see what it's like when he doesn't have all that power behind him when he's not leading an army and he's back on his heels. So I think the Omega, to answer your question, I think the Omega Rangers are right not to trust him. He's Machiavellian and selfish. But I will say. Sometimes a consistent bad guy is just as helpful as an inconsistent good guy. So, you know, we'll see what, we'll see how their relationship uh, pans out. So basically like he's got to build trust with them now. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think they're ever going to trust a guy who tried to destroy the universe, but I think you can, you can rely on people who, if you have a shared common goal, you know, if, but you, I think uh, mutual survival can be a very um, powerful motivation, motivating factor. Kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Exactly, exactly. Okay, all right, I can see that. Okay, so Francesco, can you tell us about your favorite part to draw so far? Are there any surprises that you didn't anticipate before you started working on the series? Okay, uh, in, first, in first issues, uh, I loved uh, the uh, opening uh, sequences because um, uh, when the, um, her team meets uh, again the uh, Omega Rangers and um, we see their uh, relationship and uh, and um, uh, they, their, uh, their friendship uh, relation and uh, the, the difficulty is um, to, to to draw this uh, real um, behavior so uh, it's uh, probably the most important um, things to do to to realize uh, the correctly the the issues and the surprise uh, I, I i had um are the sci-fi sequences in uh, issue two and three i loved uh, very much it's beautiful thank you for your work okay so ryan uh one of my favorite scenes in the first issue was the interaction between jason and rocky about being the red ranger so what's it like crafting those types of scenes as opposed to all of the action? Um, it's funny you bring that one up because that scene actually came out of the Comic-Con panel we did this year with Steve Cardenas. Um, he and I got to talking and I went, up, I went on his podcast and he was telling me what it was like when he actually joined the show and how unlike the, like the previous Red Ranger, he wasn't the leader of the team. And I just thought that was such an interesting thing that I, I got to hear a little bit of the behind the scenes. So I wanted to sort of express that sentiment through the characters. I think that's actually one of the things that's so fun about doing the Power Ranger comic books is that you actually get to do scenes. You know, obviously on the original show, uh, Austin St. John was gone off the show when, when, when Steve came on there. So they never really had any scenes together. I think they've interacted in the past in crossovers, but we've never actually got to see those characters at that point in time interacting. And it's actually one of the favorite things about the book. And it's something that I'm trying to do more and more as we go forward. I think those are the things that are just fun. We've had, uh, you know, We've had Trina and Aisha get to talk, and we've had uh, Zach and Adam get to talk, and we just hadn't had a chance to get Jason and Rocky, and just felt like, you know, I always wanted to see those guys, you know, talk about what it's like to, you know, to be Red Rangers. Just thought it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm really glad we got to see that. Okay, so Francesco, on a similar note, what's it like to bring these more intimate character moments to life, and how does it compare to visualizing the action scenes? I did a very hard work to to draft the uh, um, the acting of the characters because um, uh, there was um, a, a drama a dramatic moment mm -hmm. and so uh, as uh, the same importance 
uh, than uh, action uh, action sequences. Uh, I um, I I, um, I thought uh, uh, position of the character. I thought uh, the um, the alternance of the sequence between uh, the Jason uh, spoken moments and the um, Rocky spoken moments. Uh, and uh, I, I love very much Rocky. I dr drove it uh, um, probably only uh, issue f 42 of um, Go Go Power Rangers, but I loved uh, he immediately. So it's uh, um, a fantastic moment to, do to draw. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so Ryan, now that the new Power Rangers team has betrayed Zordon, what will the impact be not only for the Power Rangers, but for the Mighty Morphin team as well? Ooh, that's complicated. Um, I will use the best analogy I can think of. I think I see the Omega Ranger. So, well, okay, yeah, I think, okay. So the Power Rangers are kind of like, okay, so <laughs> that's right. Other, so when you, when you go away to college, there's like two groups of friends, right? There's the friends that stayed home and go to like local colleges. And then there's the friends who travel away to go to colleges someplace else. And I sort of saw them as the Omega Rangers are sort of like the, the ones who the, those, those who went to college. And so when they come back, there was that it was they have this moment of where their friends like, oh, yeah, like they hang out with their same friends. But they are the same. They didn't change much. But you when you leave, you tend to start to evolve and find your own priorities. And so I like that weird analogy. That they're still friends and close, but they just have different points of reference. I mean, one of the most transformative moments for me when, when I came back from college and I realized that my father and I suddenly had different philosophical beliefs about things just because I'd gone away for school and been exposed to new things. And so I think that's how the Omega Rangers are sort of seeing Zordon for the first time in their lives as sort of somebody they don't necessarily agree with. And it's about them sort of finding their footing and deciding are, were they right or wrong? Or, like they're sort of coming into their own a little bit um, and staying on the two, you know, standing on their own feet for a change without like a mentor or a sage for the first time. And I just thought that was an interesting way to look at it. I've, I've always tried to look at approach all of the Power Ranger books as sort of metaphors for those sort of moments from like high school to college and sort of be going from like a young adult to or becoming like a kid to an adult. So that's the way I approach. I don't know if that's the best answer, it's a little broad, but that's that's the way I approach all the storytelling. That's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Cause I'm right. I'm sure you can't I'm sure you can't get into like details. So I, I could but then that. I could but then you guys would kill me. So <laughs> I'll I'll accept that answer. Thank you. Um all right so Francesco last question is for you. Uh, I love the sequence where the new Power Rangers team breaks in to go take Draken. What was it like to create that as an artist? Uh, I got a lot uh, of uh, help to from uh, Ryan's script because uh, he focused the, the action, the um, important moment. Uh, and um, I loved, uh, I love very much anime series. So uh, I'm inspired, inspired by, by, by this sequence and um, um, the action. Uh, is inspired uh, um, about uh, this uh, this uh, this anime. Uh, like, um, so I, just to jump in, I will say he's being very modest. I did not give him that much advice. I just said, wouldn't it be cool if we had a Mission Impossible style Power Ranger okay, thing? Okay, and he okay. ran with it and did a fantastic job. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. No, I I inspired by by Naruto and I mean, by Naruto the ninja ninja salt and uh, and action to to drive Trini and uh, and Jason uh, action sequence. Well, it was so great. I'm sure people are going to enjoy it once they get to read it. Um, Ryan, Francesco, thank you both so much for your time today. And to everyone watching at home, be sure to pick up uh, Power Rangers number one in stores now.